Up ahead, we have the first sign of the Disney Skyliner gondola system. As you can see, the cables. My name is Brayden, host of a weekly Disney news show right here on this YouTube channel. This week, instead of just talking Disney, we're living it as I head down on my third ever solo trip down to Walt Disney World. This week, we'll be exploring everything Disney has to offer for the holiday season, starting off today by traveling down and seeing what's new as the Christmas season approaches in Disney Springs, starting right now. All right, good morning everyone. Here in the Mickey Views Magic Studio, it is currently 6.51 a.m. and there is this little thing called everyone going to work at the same time and we are about to run right into it, so let's get moving. So we are on the road. I got through the traffic in Atlanta okay. We are actually almost to the border going into Florida, which I am very excited about. So far, it's been a good trip. It's actually been pretty rainy and pretty foggy as well, so I've been very careful on the road here. I'm very fortunate in the fact that I'm actually able to get to Walt Disney World this way just by driving. Uh, Walt Disney World is only about eight hours away from me. So in June, I had my first solo trip, went down for Toy Story Land. In August, went down to cover all of the fall stuff going on. And then here, this trip here in November, we are covering all the Christmas stuff, even though it's November, because that's just how Disney is. And I really like doing the vlog and covering all the holiday action sort of early here. So if you are going down for the holiday season, if you are gonna be here for all this sort of stuff, you can sort of see what to expect, uh, what to look forward to and things like that. So it's always a lot of fun. Um, today, after checking in at the hotel, we are going to go over to Disney Springs to not only see all the holiday action going on over there, but also to meet up with another Walt Disney World vlogger. And we are going to go eat at Homecoming, uh, which is sort of like the homemade food style restaurant that has gotten very, very good reviews over in Disney Springs. So I'm very excited to try that and see everything going on in Disney Springs. And here we are crossing into Florida. It looks like we're here. We are coming up on the Walt Disney World sign right here. Here we go. There it is. Never gets old. You got Mickey and Minnie. You got Donald on the other side. Such a great sign. As we near our Disney Resort Hotel here, you can see as we are passing Coronado Springs, you can see the new Coronado Springs Tower, which is coming together, which is quite visible from the road where you can see all the facade work that is already being done for the 15-story tower. All right, everyone, we have arrived at the resort. And as you can probably tell by the giant century signs behind me, I am back at the Pop Century for the second time in like three months here, four months. I love this resort. I loved my room so much last time, the new refurbished room. I wanted to stay here again because not only is it such a cheap hotel, it is also, in my opinion, one of the best rooms Disney has on property right now. These refurbished rooms, these are not value refurbished rooms. These are like legitimately competitive refurbished rooms at the Pop Century. In the future, I do see the room rates at the Pop Century going up quite a bit just because of how good the room is. And I do see increased demand at this hotel right here not even in the lobby yet. I'm already noticing new things I didn't last time I stayed here just a few months ago there's a golf cart that has like a cool 50s car design to it I never noticed before a really cool detail here we are entering the top century Wow when I arrived at the resort via using my magic band at the front gate, Disney knew I was here and immediately sent me a notification saying my room isn't ready yet, but they'll let me know when it is. So I don't have to worry about waiting in line to check in and then find out my room isn't ready. It's already all there on the notification. A pretty cool feature. Uh, so now I'm just hanging around seeing what's new in the Pop Century area. I thought it'd be a great idea to go over and see the latest progress on the Skyliner station, which connects the Pop Century and the Art of Animation to the Skyliner gondola system directly in the middle of the Hourglass Lake. And here it is. You can see, as of right now, Disney has started putting together the wave formation which will be sort of like serving as the roof or the special design of this specific Skyliner station as a wave element to it, which is quite fitting given the Skyliner station's location in the middle of the Hourglass Lake. You can see in the concept art, this wave is gonna look really cool in the final product. And just this week, Disney has assembled the wave structure itself. As you can see, the wave formation we're talking about is right above me as we speak. And you can actually still access the bridge despite the fact that Disney is building the station right on it. You can still get back and forth between the art of animation and the Pop Century. 
All right, everyone, you can see the gondola button I just put on. So now we are headed over to Disney Springs, but on the way, I thought it'd be fitting to have the gondola system button on, because even though we already checked out the station itself here over by Pop Century, as we drive to Disney Springs, we are actually going to go right under the cables, the gondola system cables that run between Caribbean Beach and the Hollywood Studios Skyliner Station, which were just completed in their installment just last night. Up ahead, we have the first sign of the Disney Skyliner gondola system. As you can see, the cables we are driving over right now it's a little hard to see them they're actually pretty thin but those are cable wire ropes so those are actually multiple wires all put together in a rope formation so not only are they super strong I think they can hold like a hundred tons or something incredible like that but also they're very efficient and they definitely have some weight to them uh, to definitely help with the stability of the line while all at the same time being super super strong but also not very visually intrusive it's really cool to see all of these Skyliner stuff coming together and if you want this button uh, that is on my shirt you you can head over to store.mickeyviews.com and you can get it as part of the 2019 attractions button pack. So we have arrived in Disney Springs. I am on the top of the orange garage right now. I know some people think it's a joke at this point. Oh, their brain goes again about the Guardians coaster. But the fact that you can see it here on the top of the orange parking garage, just the sheer height of that building right there, you can see it is rivaling Spaceship Earth in terms of height. There is no other building, not even the massive Soarin' Theaters can be seen from here, but yet you can still see the Guardians coaster. And I do hope with the facade, the blue sky paneling, that will definitely become less apparent from this angle, but still that will not fully negate the impact this building will have on the sight lines all around Walt Disney World. Heading into Disney Springs, here you can see the back of what looks like there's a lot of scaffolding going on. There's something being built over here, and that is indeed the NBA Experience, which is going to be a restaurant and also have some interactive elements as well, which is replacing Disney Quest. And then if you look over here at the front of the building, you can see the facade is now being put in place. Right now, it's just mostly white, but of course, we're going to see all the theming and painting come into play. There's also a special arena roof they're going to put up. If you look in the concept art, which I think is really going to add a special dynamic, another dimension to the venue, which is very exciting. While we're over here by the NBA experience, we'd be remiss not to take a look at the currently empty Cirque du Soleil show area here, the whole show arena, which has a sign out front telling you that they are currently imagining a brand new show coming to the venue hopefully in the near future we already know it's going to be all about Disney animation uh, animated film classics that's what the entire Cirque du Soleil show is going to be based around a brand new show they are creating which is really really exciting when exactly that'll be coming we don't know just yet We're over here at Jaleo, which still says on the sign will be coming in 2018, but looking at the state of the venue, I'm highly suspicious uh, if that's even possible because it looks like there's still a lot of work to do. They're still doing exterior work, which means that interior work cannot be that far along. I am excited for Jaleo because Tapas is extremely popular right now. The concept of having those small eats from Spain, it's definitely a cool idea where you can get a bunch of different dishes instead of just one single meal. Like a lot of these restaurants offer, you can get a bunch of little things to split between the entire party, which is definitely a cool concept. So the holidays in Disney Springs. For a vlog filmed in mid-November, it is incredible how much decor Disney has gotten up in this shopping village. Over in the west side where we were just covering Jaleo, they had deer made out of sticks in beds of red flowers. They even had a metallic west side style Christmas tree you could take a look at with the characters in flight balloon going right up over it. And there was not a single venue being left out of the holiday fun. The Star Wars store had holiday garland. The Disney candy cauldron even had a wreath. Every lamppost on site had garland and ornaments as well. The holiday theming is so well done and so extensive, it extends, yes, even to the restrooms. Over by Town Center in the covered area was, in my opinion, some of the most elaborate decor from not just the garland lining both sides all the way down, but also the deer displays in the middle, wreaths everywhere, and from the outside, there is that line of palm trees that are all lit up with poles in between each tree, which are complete with garland bringing you to the main Christmas event here in Disney Springs, the Disney Springs Christmas tree, which is not only huge, almost as tall as the buildings themselves, but also a beautifully decorated tree as well. Outside the world of Coke here in Disney Springs, you can see they have a special winter display if you look through the windows. Really cool to see almost every store embracing the Christmas sphere already, doing all of the different holiday things. 
tons of other storefronts had special holiday happenings as well, really getting you in the spirit. It was at this point I met up with Corey Meets World. The link to Corey's channel is in the description. He does some amazing vlogs and live streams. We headed over to the now completely reimagined World of Disney store to see if the projection effects would make up for the lack of physical theming in the reimagined venue the old World of Disney had. I have to say this footage makes the projection wall look way better than it does in real life. I'm really perplexed why Disney didn't do an LED screen on the back wall. The problem with projection here is projections don't emit light because they aren't backlit like screens. So it always looks kind of weird when you make a big wall just made out of a projection with nothing being backlit. What it basically does is makes it so that you look at the back wall and then you can sort of see details on it. But if Disney had done a screen, you would notice it as soon as you entered the store. I have to say a new addition to the store I really love are the LED neon that you have on the ceiling and you have on the walls. I originally was kind of critical of the signs that Disney had to just say play or toys. But now with these neon signs, I think it definitely adds an element that is both unique to this store and also looks very fresh and modern. Right over here by the projection wall, you have the areas where there are actually Disney characters being drawn to life from iconic Disney animated films. I noticed the middle drawing, the projector already has a dead pixel on it, and they added this feature just a couple of weeks ago, so that was definitely not a good sign there. The place where this new projection style actually showed its potential was the other half of the store, all decked out for the holiday season. The ceiling is green and red for Christmas, the projection wall still isn't great, but here I totally understand what Disney was going for with this remodel of the world of Disney. It is now modular, where different seasons, they they can switch stuff out. In the fall, they can make the ceiling LEDs all orange and make it all spooky. In the spring, they can be blue or green. A lot of potential here. There is some new Mickey Mouse Club merchandise being advertised, but Corey noticed some of it has Disneyland branding on it, which was pretty odd. Not to mention when you look inside this Disneyland branded thermos being sold in Walt Disney World, if you look closely, it's like a cone shape inside for some reason, so it definitely holds a lot less liquid. The big new offering merch-wise with this Mickey Mouse Club stuff is the headband, which I think Disney did an incredible job with. I think these are going to sell like crazy. People were running over and trying them on and buying them. And then we went over and had dinner at Homecoming. For an appetizer, we had the deviled eggs, which come in a ceramic half dozen egg carton, which I thought was a great touch. And these are some of the best deviled eggs I have ever had. For our meals, Corey went with an appetizer, the thigh high chicken biscuits, which look incredible. You can totally get this appetizer as your meal. As you can see here, I went with the entree, the fried chicken sandwich and I also subbed it with the mac and cheese with bacon on top. The mac and cheese was incredible as everyone said it would be and it definitely lived up to the hype but the fried chicken sandwich itself I thought was the best thing of the night. Something about the chicken how it went together with the sauce and the pickles and the tomato really made it an awesome bite. I definitely recommend homecoming if you want some of the best southern cuisine you've ever had. To wrap up the night we went over to the Disney Springs Christmas Tree Trail which is a free attraction but they probably could charge for it because because it is that well done. Not only do you have all the themed Christmas trees you can get photos with, like this Haunted Mansion themed one, which is so well done, but there is also snow, special holiday food offerings you can get, like Gingerbread Man cotton candy, but also posters around the trail that some people have noticed include some pretty great callbacks. So we're here on the Christmas tree trail, and I finally found it, the Dreamport Rainbow Tunnel poster, of course, uh, from Imageworks back in the 90s and the 80s from the classic Journey into imagination, uh, where you used to be able to go through. Michael Jackson was in there. It was pretty iconic, uh, but really cool having a tribute to it here on the Christmas tree trail. If Disney made that into a print, I think a lot of people would buy it. As we were exiting the trail, the second to last Christmas tree that's themed, the Toy Story tree, we noticed has the green alien ornaments that there are now two giant versions of in Toy Story Land itself, which I thought was such a cool detail. And the last tree, of course, was my favorite because they had wrapped a bunch of monorail play sets around a tree, and it doesn't get much better than that. Those monorail play sets are so much fun, and a lot of Disney fans do put theirs under the Christmas tree, especially for the Christmas season. So that's gonna wrap it up for this look at everything new happening in Disney Springs for the holiday season. I really hope you guys enjoy this look. I'm so excited uh, for the holiday season here and everything you'll be able to see with all the lights and all the Christmas action going on. It is definitely an exciting time here in Walt Disney World. Tomorrow, we are headed over to Epcot, which is going to be a lot of fun. From outside the Christmas tree here in Disney Springs, this is Brayden. Have a magical day.